On day one, I was a little lava serpent out getting food with my older brother. Take this! Ha, got it! Wow, you do it so easily. <laughs> In time, little brother. You'll get there. The two of us then got interrupted by a large icy explosion. Ah! What the? Both looking over, we saw that our lava serpent home was being under attack. We both slithered over, only to see all of our people running in complete chaos as ice is being shot down from a giant ice eagle. Long ago, you serpents took something from me, my freedom, and I will take it back. An ice blast then shot right towards me. Watch out! My brother thankfully hit me out of the way as I turned around and saw the eagle fly over to take our home's sacred lava gem. No, that gem is what keeps us snakes warm. With this, I will return back to my rightful form and you snakes will pay! I have to help our people. Go and find dad now! On day two, I was slipping fast trying to make it to my family's home since i was the smallest serpent it was easier to avoid but the hail was very overpowering i finally made it to the top but instead of seeing my father inside i saw two ice creatures abigor said the head serpent would be here but where abigor was that the eagle? I accidentally spoke too loud, which gained their attention. Who's this? A weak little serpent. Kill it. They both ran in, but my dad jumped just in time to defend me. Dad! Stay away from my son! He used incredible lava abilities, taking one of them down, but the other was able to blast him, weakening him. Ah! Yeah! Bozo, your brother, where is he? He's, uh, he's down below, helping our other people. But dad, what's going on? Who was that eagle? Follow me. Everything will be explained soon. On day three, I followed my dad underground into our lava serpent's main common room. All of the other serpents, they were hurt, and some even buried in ice. This is horrible. I'm happy to see that you're safe. Brother, me too. Years ago, us serpents broke free from our deadliest predator, Abigor the Eagle. But he has returned and taken our sacred lava gem. With it, he will be able to wipe out all of us. But there may be a way we can fight back. My father then placed down an ancient looking lava book, which shot out projections of different lava artifacts. Legend has it there are these powerful gems out there in dangerous terrains. Each could grant us serpent's abilities like no other. But since I'm injured, I've decided to task my oldest son, Fang, to go out and find them, to become our people's fighting chance. Wait, what? My father and brother slithered out of the common room together. Hey, wait up! I followed them until we reached the exit, showing a trail heading into a dark forest. Dad, I need to go with him. It's too dangerous to go alone. Bozo, you are too young, too weak. You can't handle the journey. I will make it back, brother. I promise. My brother began to slither away, and I knew that I had to find a way to follow him. On day four, I waited until it was dark out and secretly slithered out of my home. It wasn't long until I was met by a large, deadly temple. Is he in here? I reluctantly went inside following down deep in the corridors until I made it inside of a main center room where I saw a strange fire fang on a pedestal. That's the first artifact we need. Then I noticed my brother, he was walking up about to pick it up, but something feels off. It's almost too easy. Wait! He picked the item up, causing the entire temple to shake, and the ground even gave out below us. Oh no, it was a trap! 
Fozo, what are you doing here? I couldn't just let you go alone. I just couldn't. The room's shaking got even worse, which started to cause parts of the ceiling to fall. We both turned and saw that there was an exit leading straight outside. There! On day five, the two of us began to jump through the remaining floor that was left while there was rumble all around us. It wasn't long before we made it to the final jump. This one seems far. Ah, come on! I then thought back to what my father said. You are too young, too weak. I, uh, I don't know if I can do it. You don't have a choice. Okay, here goes nothing. Ah, I, I actually did it. As I reunited with my brother, the ceiling rumbled and collapsed over the exit. No, we were too late. Fozo, take cover now. I did as he said, but the entire ceiling then collapsed right on top of us. <coughs> Brother, where are you? I searched through all the destruction, only to find him weak in the midst of it all. No, 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 no! <coughs> Fozo, <coughs> you are okay. Yeah, but you, I gotta get you back home now. No, no, it's too late. I'm not gonna make it. No, I can. Listen to me. Dad, he said you were too young, too weak. Don't listen to him. Don't ever listen to anyone who tells you that you can't do something. They are all wrong. It's up to you now. You have to save our people. Do it. Do it for me. I believe in you. Brother? Brother! No! He's gone. He's actually gone. Just then, a glow caught my eye. Wait, is that? I walked over to see that it was the fire fang. I have to do this. I went over and picked it up. Because of this, something strange happened. I became an even stronger lava serpent. The artifact, it worked. I promise, Fang, I'm gonna make you proud. On day seven, I left the destroyed temple. But as I did, I saw some of Abigor's ice creatures getting out of a cave with resources? I think we have enough. What are they up to? I followed them until reaching a clearing, which showed a much larger mining site. Bring these resources back to my nest at once! That lava gem was only forged because of my lava! When I destroy it, I can finally be freed from this icy prison! I will be the lava eagle again! And will prey on those filthy serpents! A lava eagle? Are we the ones that turn him into ice? But why? I didn't notice that I was standing over a patch of ice, and my lava scales caused me to fall right through. Ah! Ah! Where am I? I looked around and saw that I was inside of an icy cave, and there, cowering in one of the corners, was a small mouse. Ah! Hey, keep it down. We're gonna get caught. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, man. Stay away from me. Don't eat me. Hey, stop it. On day eight, I continued chasing after the small mouse until reaching a dead end. Oh, no. Oh, no. Please, calm down. I'm not gonna hurt you, okay? What are you doing here anyways? I'm, I'm hiding. That lava eagle's been looking for some food, and me and my kind are on the menu, pal. As he finished saying that, the roof above us blasted open, showing that Abigor was standing over us. Oh, no. A lava serpent? What are you doing here? His icy creations then all got summoned around us. Nope, nope, I'm out of here. Make quick work of him now. The ice creations all rushed in, but out of instinct, I bit at them in a large flame. Wait, the fire thing gave me abilities. I used it on some of the creatures, putting up a fight, but there were too many of them. I then noticed a small hole in the cave's walls and quickly made my way over, slithering away just in time. Those serpents, they're up to something and I will find out.
On days 9 to 10, I slithered out of the tunnel systems, making it back home. I looked around and saw that my people were growing weaker by the day. You! You left? Yeah, I, I did. But listen, we can't stay for long. This place, it's dangerous. The eagle, he's going to be back. And when it's time, he's going to take all of us down. Your brother, where is he? Dad, I, I tried everything that I could. He didn't make it. No, no! This is your fault! Look, the temple that we were in, it was a trap, okay? And it crashed down over us and... No! If you didn't go and distract your brother, he may still be here! My father then slithered away into the common room, and I followed, looking over, seeing the book of artifacts that I still needed to get. Dad, I'm so sorry, but I made him a promise that I was gonna stop that eagle and help our people, and I plan to keep it. But first, we all need to leave. We're all sitting ducks just staying here. Get out! Leave! You are weak and are no son of mine. Dad, no, stop! I was left feeling sad and lost until... Ah, my head, man! What the? What are you doing here? Look, I don't have anywhere else to go, okay? My people are all gone. But I did kind of hear your conversation there, pal. Is it true? You want to stop that evil eagle? Yeah? Why? Because if you don't eat me, and I mean that, then I know where one of the pieces you're looking for Ah. On days 11 to 12, Bruno led me far away to a large dump. There were people roaming around the place hard at work and keeping guard. So, you said one of the lava artifacts were in here? Oh, yeah. The lava eyes. We just got to make it into the restricted section. Come on, follow me. As we snuck through the junkyard, we were barely avoiding the workers, but we eventually made it through a gap in the piles of trash to find the restricted section. What the? No, no, no. I swore it was right here. Bruno and I then both slowly turned around to see a massive three-headed lava dog. Uh, I think I know who took it. On days 13 to 14, we were running throughout the junkyard with the guard dog right behind us. I just don't get it. This place had a guard dog, but it was the sweetest little chihuahua. Well, not anymore. We continued to run circles around the restricted area as it kept biting and trying to attack us at every turn. Oh no, a dead end. What do we do now, dude? I don't know. That's it. The crane. The mouse then ran straight towards it, leaving me with the dog. Oh, come on. We began to fight as its empowered attacks were very strong. I tried to hit him back with my lava bite, but I was nowhere near as powerful. As he went in to bite me again, I dodged out of the way and stood under the crane above. Ready? Yeah, ready! Rufus growled again as he charged forward in his rage. And now! I dodged out of my way just as Bruno dropped the crate right onto the dog. Whoa, that actually worked! I then looked over, and crawling out from under the crate was a tiny chihuahua as he coughed up the lava eyes. See what I mean? That was the guard dog. Hey, what's up, little Roger? How you doing? Ah, oh, I was finally able to pick up the eyes. And because of this, I felt its power surge within me. I gained five more hearts and became a much stronger lava serpent who can now spit out pure lava. Awesome. All right, this place reeks. Let's get out of here. I was going to come back when it was time, but you were all planning something. What is it? I'd never betray my own kind. <laughs> so, this is what they're trying to do. Well, I won't let them.
On days 15 to 16, I went out and found a secluded place in the desert to build my very own home. This is perfect. Wasting no time, I built in the side of a canyon and made sure it was nice and perfect. There we go. Then, in the center of it, I built up a place to hold the five lava artifacts. When I placed the first two pieces down, a burning gem already began forming. Maybe all of these can make a new lava gem. I then looked over and saw that Bruno had already dug his very own home high up as well. So, you knew about the lava artifacts that I'm looking for? Yeah, I usually eavesdrop a lot. I know the last three that you need are the magma media, the never-ending flame, and the molten heart. Huh, noted. And stop invading people's privacy. I slithered up to a spot overlooking our new home and took the time to build my brother a memorial so that he could see all the good we're gonna do. I'm gonna keep that promise that I made you. I know dad's angry right now and I understand, but if he doesn't listen to me, then they are all gonna be in trouble. Suddenly, I heard yelling coming from nearby. As I ran towards the noise, I saw a fire dancer in a tiki mask running around the desert in a panic. Wow, the humanity! Hey, calm down. What's going on? I can't just calm down. My village, it's gonna be burned to a crisp! Huh? On day 17 to 18, the fire dancer led me hastily to his tiki village. There, just off the coast, was a tall and very active volcano. This is the home of the magma meteor, at least for the time being. The magma meteor, one of the lava artifacts. But why do you say for the time being? Before he could answer, the ground began to shake as the volcano erupted with molten rock that flew out and crashed into one of the homes. Earth, Earth, Earth. That's why this volcano has been here and dormant for thousands of years. But now it's gonna be erupting real soon. He led me closer to the volcano and towards a set of ancient doors that blocked the path inside. Only a tiki elder is able to get inside the core of the volcano. But maybe you had our elder's blazing mask doors would open for you. Thing is, no one's seen the elder in centuries. As he said this, the tiki tossed me over his fire staff. That will help you find his resting place. But please hurry, we don't have much time. On days 19 to 21, I began to search around the nearby coast, looking for any sign of the tiki elder. Where is that mask? Just then, the fire staff that was given to me lit up and began to spin. Whoa, whoa! The flames began to shoot from it and led straight towards a hidden entrance. As I came close, my instincts told me to raise the staff again, and I blasted the entrance of it, causing it to open. After walking inside, I was met by a large chamber of a tiki tomb, and across the way was the ancient mask. That has to be it. I was about to run up as a voice rang out into the room. Those who wish to don this mask must have the power of the elder. Looking around, I noticed three runic crystals had appeared. I struck the one closest to me, causing it to activate. Nice. I guess I just had to get all of them. But suddenly, the room began to change as the floor gave away to spiky pits and there were buzz saws everywhere. Not nice. Ten, nine, eight. Oh, come on. I quickly began to jump from platform to platform, getting close enough to the second crystal. Yes, one more. Three, two. I shot at the final one, but missed. One, you have failed. No. Because of this, the elder mask itself activated and rose into the air. No. The unworthy must be disposed of. On days 22 to 26, the mask flew in to attack. It had immense firepower and would cause the whole tomb to shake. I did my best trying to keep distance, but the mask just kept hitting me. Ah! You are not capable. You will never be worthy of the mask. Because of those words, I thought back to my brother. Don't ever 
Listen to anyone who tells you that you can't do something. I am worthy! With newfound strength, I began to fight back against the mask with everything that I had. I hit him with my lava bite, which knocked him back. So I hit him again and again until he was backed up against the wall. With one final spit, I took down a nearby pillar that struck the mask, causing it to fall to the ground. You are worthy. I did did it. I picked up the mask and ran outside of the tomb only to see that it had started snowing? Oh no. When I made it back to the Tiki village, I was greeted by a horrible sight. The volcano still wasn't lighting up, but the village was almost completely covered in ice and snow. And there, flying above it all, was Abigor. On days 27 to 29, Abigor continued to fly around the Tiki village, blasting everything with ice. I know the sun Serpent is here! Where is he? The volcano then started to rumble even louder as more molten rock flew into the sky. Oh no, I have to stop it. But Abigor, there's no time. I slithered as fast as I could towards the ancient doors. But he saw me. There you are. With a blinding speed, Abigor flew across the village and hit me so hard that I slammed into one of the nearby buildings. Ah! The volcano was now completely erupting everywhere. So, you really are that serpent I saw all those days ago. And you're trying to do what exactly? Be strong enough to save your people? It's pointless. No! In my rage, I blasted my lava spit at Abigor, but his ice attack pushed through it, and he struck me. Ah! All you lava serpents will pay for what you did. Pay? What do you mean? What did we ever do to you? You took everything from me. My lava feathers, my nest, all of it! He tried to attack me again, but I used the remaining of my strength to dodge out of the way. I used to be the lava eagle, once in complete control. All the animals were my prey, and you snakes were the best dinner I could ask for. Until one of your kind found a way to channel their power into a curse! This curse! My lava power was taken away and put into a gem! My nest crumbled! But soon, I'll have all that control back! He was about to attack me with one final hit when... I am Gouts of flame struck Abigor as a horde of fire dancers ambushed him. He began to fly up in a panic, finally giving me an opening towards the ancient doors. I gotta stop this volcano now. On days 30 to 32, as I approached the doors, I held out the elder's mask and they swung right open. Yes, once inside, I saw the massive magma meteor. I have to absorb that? In order to accept the power of the meteor, you must enter its core. That's when I noticed a hole in the side of it. Well, here goes nothing. I began to slither in just as the volcano started to quake even more violently. It didn't take long for me to reach the core. And as I slithered up, something began to happen. I gained five more hearts and felt so much stronger to the point where I can now call down my own magma meteor. Sweet. But I couldn't celebrate for long as the rumbling continued around me. Uh, what's going on? I was then erupted, shooting me far up into the sky. On days 33 to 35, I was blasted so far away that I landed in a muddy swamp. Thankfully, the water broke my fall. But then, ow, 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 I forgot. Lava Serpent, Abigor, he's caught on to our plan. But 
how far along is he with his? My thoughts were then interrupted by the sudden sounds of crying? <laughs> Where's that coming from? I searched around until I saw a small campfire in the middle of a batch of secluded swamp trees. And there were a bunch of my lava serpent people. But they all looked so weak. Hey, everyone. Bozo? Wow, you look different. What happened to you all? Why aren't you at home? Here, let me show you why. We slithered through the swamp until we reached a spot that overlooked my people's home. But it was completely frozen over and destroyed. Abigor came back just like you said and he found the ancient book. He knows our plan. Yeah, I know. Oh, wait, where's my dad? Whoever survived and wasn't in hiding, they took his prisoners. We think he took them back to his nest. I have to find him. But first, follow me. You guys need to be safe. On days 36 to 39, I led all the lava serpents hiding in the swamp back to my base. To make them feel at home, I built up their burrows just like how they were before. I even added plenty of fires all around so that they can grow strong again. Thank you, Fozo, so much. Of course, this place was made for all the lava serpents. I then went and placed the chunk of the magma meteor on its center platform, causing flames to spark in the air. And the lava gem, it's even stronger. Hey, buddy! Oh, hey, you're all right. Well, thanks to you, that bird finally left after he saw you were gone. And the volcano stopped rumbling too. Thank goodness. Oh, and... Here, I believe these belong to you. Now, I need to find Abigor's nest. He has my dad. Do you think you know where that could be? Thanks. I have no clue. He was flying off to some sort of crazy tall mountain, so. Just then, Bruno scurried up next to us. Hey, you talking about the snowy peaks? I know that place like the back of my paw. Come on. Bruno wasted no time scurrying out of the base. Hey, wait up. We journeyed all the way to the edge of an icy mountain where I could barely see. But far off at the peak was a large eagle's nest. On days 40 to 44, Bruno led me up the icy mountain until we reached the base of Abigor's nest. Here, this is our ticket inside. <laughs> As we made it through the small crack, we had to hide behind cover as the place was filled with Abigor's ice creations. They're building something. It looks like four pillars that surround the stolen lava gem. So that's his plan. When those pillars are finished, Abigor's gonna use the gem to turn himself back into the lava eagle. Yikes. Then we better stop him before he gets to that point. Come on. Just before Bruno and I ran in, I heard a horrifying yell. Ah, stop. Dad. I slithered down without hesitation, knowing I needed to find him. Fozo, don't go. Down below was an icy prison area where more of my fellow lava serpents were being held in cold cages. And higher up than the rest of them was my father. Hey. Hey, stop that! The creature turned his attention to me and charged straight towards me. Bring it! I unleashed my new magma meteor attack that crushed the creature in one blow, leaving just a pile of snow left behind in its place. F Fozo, you're here? Yeah, I am. On days 45 to 47, I broke all the other serpents out of their cages with my lava abilities. A chosen warrior! You should be here, so leave now! No, Dad, I'm not leaving without you. Just, uh, hang on! I began jumping between cages and platforms to get up to my dad's level, where I broke him free with another attack. This doesn't change anything. Of course it doesn't. Why would it? I'm just your youngest, your weakest son, right? How dare you? How dare you? All of my life, I've come second behind my brother, but it was never his fault. It was yours. Look, I'm sorry that he's gone. I miss him too, okay? Every day. And you know, I blame myself for what happened, but I'm doing everything I can to make him proud because that's what he wanted. Fozo, I... My dad was cut off by a noise coming from behind as I turned around to see that the snow creature rose back to life. 
it unleashed a powerful attack, causing me and my father to fall back down to the others. Ah! Wait, Dad, what are you? Get the others out of here, now! Ah! With that, my dad and the large creation clashed in the center of the room. The impact was so powerful that it broke the ice floor below them. Ah! Dad, no! On days 48 to 52, more ice creations started to take notice. So the other serpents and I ran to find a way out. We found a room safely hidden from the patrolling creatures, but I knew that we couldn't stay here long. Look, leave. I'm going back to find my dad. As I went for the doorway, one of the lava serpents blocked me. Hey, what are you doing? I then looked out of the room and watched as Abigor landed inside the nest. Who invaded my nest? Listen to me. Abigor's plans are basically complete, and right now, you're still not strong enough to take him on. It's a death wish to stay here, Fozo. Yeah, I know. We have to go. Come on. I'll get you all out of here now. When we safely made it outside of the nest and back to the foot of the mountain, I noticed Bruno waiting for us. Hey, Fozo, hurry. You gotta see this, pal. What? We escaped from the tundra and made it to the outskirts of a kingdom where a ton of knights were fighting a a dragon? It was rampaging around, destroying everything. Why did you bring me here, Bruno? Because this place, it's known as the Towers of Never-Ending Flame. Ring any bells? The Never-Ending Flame. The next artifact. They have it, and they need my help. On days 53 to 56, Bruno and I started to run into the kingdom as knights were running around frantically. Oh! When we finally made it to the base of the tower, it was only us and the dragon left. A uh, nice dragon? It jumped in to attack. It was very powerful and breathed fire down on us every chance that it could. Ah! I used all my abilities at my disposal, but most of them were no use. The dragon, it's too powerful. The fight led to a tower. And when I finally made it near the top, the dragon flew right in to attack at me. Ah! Wait, I have an idea. I quickly aimed at their wings with my magma meteor, hitting them right out of the air. Because of this, they plummeted all the way down to the courtyard, hitting the ground hard. Yes! As the dust settled, the dragon transformed into a woman? Huh? A uh, surrender! Uh, I... You saved me. Please, listen to me. I am the queen of this kingdom. You're the what? Yeah, told you that you'd want to see this. It's crazy, man. I am the queen of the towers of never-ending flame. But recently, a horrifying entity turned me into the very thing that could destroy what I've sworn to protect. All right, I'm willing to help you with your little situation here, but only if you allow me to have the never-ending flame. I understand, but you should know, this curse is not one so easily broken. It's been deemed impossible to break without destroying the thing that did this to me. Then point me in the direction of who did. On days 57 to 59, the Dragon Queen led us deep into the ominous swampland. And as we finally reached a clearing, she pointed it out. The entity that cursed me was the Undead King, and he resides there. In the distance was a grand kingdom in the swamp, but something was wrong. Spirits and ghosts roamed throughout everywhere. Well, there's no time to waste. Bruno and I snuck our way through the undead streets until we reached the castle itself. And once we were inside, the doorway opened up to reveal a ghastly throne room. Floating there above his crypt was the undead king. Hey, you put a curse on the never-ending flame kingdom, and you need to take it off now. <laughs> that curse is unbreakable. I put it there so that my beautiful kingdom, my army, could grow. The more their queen kills, the more souls come crawling to me. 
Okay, dark. But we aren't going anywhere until you break it. Very well. Then you must be executed. On day 60 to 63, I ran in to attack the undead king. He quickly started blasting spell after spell towards me, even summoning strange undead creatures. Ah, gross. Ah, uh, I looked back to see that Bruno was being chased by his summoned creatures. Uh, hold on. We all continued to fight as the undead king just kept attacking us. And, ah, uh, there you go. Are you all right? Phew, now I am. But dude, look, all of his magic, it comes from that book he has. Whoa! We both jumped out of the way and started to run around the room together. You're right. Think you can distract him for me? On it! Bruno and I split up as I went to face the king head on. We clashed as his magic started to get me low on hearts. Another soul for my kingdom! But before the king could cast another spell, Bruno ran up and bit him. As the king swung around to attack Bruno, I focused my lava spit onto his book and burned it away with one hit. No! With that, the king wilted away completely. Huh, seems like the book held all of his power. Hurry, we gotta get back to the queen. As we made it back to the tower, there to greet us was the dragon as she quickly transformed back into her human form. You did it, the curse has been lifted. Thank you so much. And now your reward as promised. The queen led us into a royal chamber where the never ending flame burned. I touched the flame, causing its power to channel into me. I gained five more hearts, and now I could breathe flames just like a dragon. Awesome! On day 64 to 68, we safely made it back to base to see that all of my fellow lava serpents made it back too. From there, we all worked together to build up more burrowed homes for everyone. Thank goodness for the hotter climate. We're all feeling so much stronger already. And the lava gem too. I'm happy to hear that. I ran over and placed the never ending flame with the other pieces, causing the lava gem to erupt and grow in size again. Whoa. How powerful can this thing get? I then made my way up to my brother's monument. Look around. It's just like what you would have wanted. Almost everyone is safe. And now I just need to save dad. As I said this, the sky above started to turn a dark red and a familiar echoed out. <laughs> No, Abigor, his plans, they must be complete. I have to hurry now. On days 69 to 73, I climbed as fast as I could back up the icy mountain. And once inside the nest, I realized I was too late. The four frozen pillars were now constructed and floating between them was the lava gem as Abigor flew up to it. Yes, fuel me, free me. No, no, but with that, the old lava gem was destroyed and its power completely thawed Abigor's ice form. And he was now the lava eagle again. <laughs> yes! With one single attack, he transformed the whole mountaintop into his lava domain. Now that I'm free, those lava serpents and any creature that tries to get in my way will be devoured. He flew off in a flash, raining down fire and lava with such mastery and power. I need to find my dad now. I began to search through the lava nest in every hallway, every room, everywhere. Come on, come on. Finally, that's when I saw him, but he still looked so weak. Dad. <coughs> Fozo, son. You really came back for me? Of course I did. We're family. Now, come on. I'm gonna get you out of here. On days 74 to 77, my dad and I escaped Abigor's nest and got a safe distance away on a hillside. Abigor had already scorched most of the valley. He's already too strong. It's only a matter of time before he fights us all. 
I tried so hard to imprison him in that icy curse, but it still wasn't enough. Wait, you were the serpent that imprisoned him? Yes, my son, I was, which is why I expected so much of Fang. As the leader of our people, I did everything I could for the Lava Serpents and expected my heir, your older brother, to do the same. But because of that, I neglected you. Bozo, I'm, I'm so sorry for everything, for making you feel small and weak, to blaming you for his death. Look, Dad, I blame myself for what happened too, okay? Well, don't, because if we had listened to you all those days ago, maybe things would have played out differently. Off in the distance, Abigor was circling back to his lava nest. Come now, son, quick! I followed my father deep down underground, where he led me to the entrance of a sacred serpent temple. Where are we? This very temple holds the final item that we need to complete the lava gem, but you must find it alone. Good luck, son, my chosen warrior. On days 78 to 80, I journeyed into the sacred temple, looking for any sign of the final artifact. What was that? Seems like I'm not alone. Anyone there? I called out just as I entered a large cavern filled with lava and rocky platforms leading across. Okay. Cautiously, I began slithering and jumping across the lava lake as the hissing got louder and louder until... <laughs> Whoa! A giant lava worm leapt out of the lava towards my platform. Hey, what gives? The chosen lava serpent. The one said to take the mantle of warrior. Before I could answer, a loud noise rang through the cavern from the worm. Is that a heartbeat? Prove your heart and replace it with one. That's On days 81 to 85, the worm began to attack me as it would swim and leap out of the lava. Ah! It even tried eating me whole. I have to keep moving. My attacks would strike its body, but it was relentless. I finally focused on where I heard the heartbeat coming from. Wait, it's in its head? That's so weird. <laughs> The worm chomped down as I barely jumped to safety. Pathetic. Is this all you got? No. What I've got is a promise. The worm sprung up to attack me again, but this time I hit him directly in the head. Finally, taking him down. With that, the molten heart fell before me. And when I picked it up, I was empowered. I gained 10 more hearts and felt lava spreading all throughout my body. I'm finally strong enough. It's time to make my brother proud. On days 86 to 90, while I was making my way back to base, I started to hear shouting nearby. Hey, let go of me, pal! Bruno? What's going on? I slithered up to the hill to see Abigor's creations, and they were escorting Bruno and my people towards his nest. I gotta help them. But before I could act, Abigor flew down above the group. Good work, my creation. Now bring them to my nest, where I will feast. No, they have everyone. But what about the lava gem? I need it if I want to stand a chance against him. On days 91 to 94, I made it back to my base, only to see that it was completely abandoned, except for my dad and the lava gem. Dad, what happened? I had just arrived when I saw your rat friend leading the serpents out of the base. He said the only chance of stopping Abigor lied with you and the lava gem. If they gave themselves up, then the creations would have no reason to come here and never get a chance to destroy the lava gem. We have to make things right. We have to try. But we still have time. Place down the molten heart and let the gem empower you. I did as he said. And as I placed it down, the lava gem erupted in a flash of light. I was now in a vision and looked forward only to see my brother. Don't be so afraid, little brother. You're here. I'm just so happy to see you. I am too. You have no idea how proud you're making me. You've grown so much. Thanks for keeping your promise, little brother. Of course, but 
Everyone, they're still in danger. I... Hey, remember what I told you? Don't let anyone tell me I can't do something. And that you are capable of anything. I believe in you. Dad believes in you. Now go and prove us right. With that, the vision of my brother faded away. And I grew into a much larger lava serpent. All right, time to end this. On days 95 to 99, looking up at the peak of the once icy mountain, Abigor was flying above his nest. Ah, the youngest serpent returns. It's a pity a fight between me and your brother would have been legendary. But instead, I'll have to settle for a little snack. Enough, Abigor! My brother is always with me, and I'm gonna stop you. Stop me? You and what army? Destroy him! The lava army rushed in to attack, but I was ready for them. I used every ability at my disposal, crushed groups of them at a time, and burned away more with my new flame. As I slowly made my way up the mountain, more and more of them kept coming, but each one fell as I finally made it to the peak. Bozo! Bruno, I'm so glad you're... Suddenly, Abigor attacked me from behind, hitting me against the cages. Ah! On day 100, I was cornered with all of my friends as Abigor towered over us. You think that you can just come in here and stop me? And you really think that I wouldn't try? Well, now we both know. We began to fight as our lava attacks clashed in the courtyard. His power was so strong and his mastery of lava was unmatched. I pushed Abigor back with my lava bite as he took to the air and started to rain down flames on the cages. Ah! No! I then used my lava spit to melt the cages away, allowing the serpents and Bruno to run towards the exit. Go! Get out of here! Ah! They can run for now. I'll just find and devour them later! No, you won't! I continued to fend off the eagle, but my hearts were getting so low! You're still so weak! He flew up and was about to unleash a finished move when I remembered the words of my brother. You are capable of anything. We believe in you, little brother. I'm not weak. I called down another magma meteor, and this time it hit him right out of the sky. Ah! My wing! I approached Abigor as I was now towering over him. Your reign of terror is over. No! With one final dragon's flame, I took Abigor down. And with that, us lava serpents could finally live in peace. On day one, I spawned inside of a tall lava volcano as a baby lava worm. I looked around and watched as my fellow worms burrowed into the lava and used it to build up our home. Whoa, can I do that too? Just then, the sky above us turned gray and water started to blast down from the top of our volcano. Everyone run! One by one, every time they got hit, they would instantly turn into a obsidian no in a huge wave entered in the water reptiles men attack they flooded in through every corner of our once beautiful home and made sure that all of my kind was no more yes all of your pathetic lava monuments have already been taken over with your power gone, the lava people shall perish under the name of Cascade! I was scared and didn't know what to do. But then behind me emerged my mother. We have to go now. The two of us began to run through the battlefield. But just then, my mom got hit by a heavy water attack. Ah, mom. This way, hurry. On day two, my mom and I were slithering through the volcano's tunnels as fast as we could. The reptiles were chasing after us and their presence alone turned the very lava in our caves to obsidian. This isn't good. But up ahead was a lava door passageway. It's an exit. Sadly though, before we could reach the lava, it mostly turned into obsidian. No, we're trapped. Is this 
it? Move aside. My mom then used a crazy lava power, building up a wall of lava that separated us from the lizards. And from it, summoned a lava protector. The water reptiles began to fight the lava guardian and were doing everything they could to get through. Blast this wall with water! Bozo, my boy, listen to me. I am... I'm not gonna make it, but you can. No, but... No, but. It is now up to you, the last lava worm. In order to save me and the rest of our people, you must go out and find the five lava monuments, reignite them, and unleash the lava warrior. Only then can we win this. Just then, the lava wall got bursted through. Get them! Mom, no! She hit me through the crevice of the lava, and as I escaped, she also got turned into obsidian. Mom! I knew that I had to keep going, so I swam through the lava until I reached a shoreline. I have to find the lava monuments? Where do I even begin? As I finished my sentence, I saw a herd of magma snails charging right towards me. Oh no! On day three, I was bracing for impact, but the snails just ran right through me. The water reptiles found our monument. Everybody leave. Monument? Somebody please help. I followed the noises, entering what looked to be a burrow, but everything here was destroyed. This isn't good. Stay away from me. I then looked out in the center of the room and saw a tiny baby magma snail cowering in fear. And is that a water golem? Lava must perish. Oh no, I have to help. On day four, I did my best to try and reach the baby snail, but the golem noticed and swung at me immediately. Ah! Not only did he try to smash me with his large rocky fists, but he also shot out beams of water straight from his eye and from them summoned water minions. What the? They all began to slash at me and hurt a lot. Help me! That crazy golem was summoned by those lizards to destroy my home. Not if I have anything to say about it. I finally avoided its hits and reached the vantage point with the snail. And just as I did, I felt a strange feeling from within me, causing me to shoot out a deadly lava shot right at the golem. Whoa, I have lava powers. The golem tried his best to fight back, but with my newfound confidence, I was able to counter him again and again. This is for my mom. And just just like that, the golem was defeated. Because of his death, the entire room began to rumble, and all of the watery destruction disappeared as the room transformed back into its former glory. Because of this, my body began to change. I was now a larger lava worm and gained five more hearts. Whoa, this must have been one of the five lava monuments. Yeah, it was, and you brought it back to its glory. It looks like you got stronger when you did as well. Thanks for saving me. My family all ran away and left me behind. Well, don't worry. I lost my family too. Maybe we can help each other get them back by stopping these water reptiles. Agreed. My name is Magmo. On day five, Magmo and I went to work by gathering enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. From there, the two of us started to build up our very own homes inside of the monument. I made sure to take my time and make my own room nice and perfect. Hopefully, we can stay safe down here, the Blazing Burrow. Awesome. I think it's a perfect home. Just then, I noticed that I had a strange lava core inside of my inventory. I must have gotten this when I ignited the monument. Out of nowhere, the core came to life and popped out of me. What the? Hey, get back here. I chased the core down the burrow's tunnels until we reached a large room that held a stoned over statue. Without a second to think, the core shot itself within it, causing the entire statue to change. Wait a minute. Is this? Yup. 
This was our mighty lava warrior, the protector of all lava creatures. But when our monuments faded away, it looks like he did too. But if we ignite all of the monuments, then he will be back. So that's what I'm going to do. Just then, explosions sounded off on our roof. What is that? On day six, I followed the explosions until I saw coastal stables being under attack by the water reptiles. There were fire horses doing everything they could to escape, but the lizards made quick work of them and even captured a few groups. I will ask you one more time. Have you seen a rogue lava worm? No, we haven't. Please, leave us alone! You all had one job! Those lava creatures have taken something important from me, and they deserve this! None shall live, not even that pathetic worm! Just then, a couple of scouts walked towards them. We have to find that worm so that our plan for mass destruction succeeds. Go to Magma Rock Volcano and make sure that he doesn't try to ignite it. Magma Rock Volcano? Can that be another monument? The scouts all left, and I knew that I had to follow them. It wasn't long until we made it to a shoreline, and they quickly started to walk across the ocean? Great! How am I supposed to get there now? Just then, I got attacked behind by an undead spirit? Ah! What the? On day seven, the undead spirit continued to fight me. I was about to defend myself until... Take that! Who are you? I am Captain Babybeard. And it looks like there are even more spirits out and about. I am so confused. The baby pirate told me to follow him, and I did. It wasn't long until we reached a tropical cove that had a pirate ship far off on the water. That be me ship, but it was stolen by all these undead pirates. Wait a minute. If I help you get your ship back, can you take me to Magma Rock Volcano? Certainly. I love sailing. Now, how am I supposed to get on board? I looked over and noticed a rocky path that led straight to the side of the ship. Bingo! I began to partake in jump after jump, but as soon as I started... We have an intruder! Fire! Uh-oh! On day eight, the pirate ship began to blast at me with deadly cannon fireballs. Ah! I did my best, landing each jump, and knew if I fell into that water, I was done for. Sink him! Just one more jump. Come on! Yes! But then, the undead pirates all charged at once! Bring it! They sliced at me every chance they could. But since I was a newly upgraded lava worm, I had a new ability that allowed me to rain down lava rocks from the sky. Aha! Take that! With my new lava abilities, these undead pirates didn't stand a chance. Curse Ahoy! Yay! it, laddie. Me beautiful ship. I've missed you. I'm just happy that you have what's yours. Now, do you think you can take me to that volcano? Certainly. Drop the mast. It's time we set sail. On days 9 to 10, the baby captain's ship docked at the shore of a very intimidating island. But the volcano's lava wasn't its natural color and looked more like water? Oh no, something isn't right here. Be careful, laddie. I will wait here. I walked on the island and immediately noticed a trail of water that had wrapped around the volcano all the way up. The reptiles must have beat me here. I followed the trail and even used my lava abilities to help me climb up some parts of the volcano until I finally reached the top where I saw Medusa standing at its core. The entire volcano, it's stoned over. <laughs> the lava worm, we have finally met. On days 11 to 12, I was face to face with Medusa. Wait, are you teaming up with the water reptiles? Why, yes, 
The very reptiles that are connected to my hair informed me of Cascade's mission, and honestly, I couldn't agree with them more. Medusa began to attack me with poisonous attacks. Ah! She would then get close and use her claws to slash at me. Stop this! They're hurting innocent lives! Families! You think that is bad? Just wait until you see what they have planned next. I would defend myself using my lava abilities, but she then lurched forward and stared me down with an intense gaze. Ah! Wait, was that supposed to hurt me? Ugh, why aren't you turning to stone? Oh, I don't have eyes. Ugh, no matter. Medusa then summoned up a pillar of stone and continued to shoot down at me. None of my abilities can reach her. What am I gonna do? Wait a minute. I called down my molten meteor attack right in front of Medusa, creating a magma platform. Yes, I ran, jumping from the new magma platform. And as soon as I landed next to Medusa, I took her down with one final hit. What? Because of her defeat, the entire volcano became active again. Lava began to flow as I felt myself drawn in its power. I grew larger, gained five more hearts, and now had the ability to slither across lava. On days 13 to 14, I went back to my base with Captain Babybeard. Thanks for letting me stay with you. With those darn reptiles running around the ocean, it isn't very safe. Of course, you will be okay here. I found a spot in the base to build him up his very own miniature pirate ship. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Fozo. Also, if you find yourself running across any maps, give me a holler. I am sure we can find ourselves some treasure. Will do, Captain. I then made it over to the Lava Warrior and placed down the second core. This caused him to light up and break free even more. Wow, I can't wait to see how he's gonna look when he's back to his former glory. Hey, <coughs> oh, Bozo. I looked over and saw that Magmo's shell was cracked. What happened? I went out searching for the next lava monument, but when I found it, I got attacked. I feel so weak. Oh no, I need to fix you up, but how? You know, I think I know a place that can help. On days 15 to 16, I journeyed out of the base with the magma snail until we reached a blazing bridge that led to a lava swamp. Who lives here? We were about to cross over when we realized that the bridge was totally collapsed. Oh, come on. We need to get across. Yeah, yeah, join the club, buddy. I looked over and crawling on the side of the bridge was a lava axolotl. What the? Hey, we need help fixing my snail's shell. Oh, well, the only one that can help fix something like that is our grand axolotl. Unless you can get us across the bridge, we ain't seen them anytime soon. Ah, uh, I think I have an idea. Everyone, stand back! When everyone cleared out of the way, I used my new lava slither ability to form a layer of lava across the broken bridge. Because of this, I was able to walk across and forge it fully back together. Yes! Eh, show off! But I will say that was kind of impressive. Come on! This way, to the Grand Axolotl! On day 17 to 18, we followed the axolotl deep into his lava swamp until things started to look strange. Just over this hill. We're close. We then finally reached his home, only to see weak and frail axolotls roaming around. There. <coughs> He's the one that can help us. In the center of the camp was the grand axolotl. What is the meaning of your visit? My friend, he needs your help. He's getting weaker by the second. And so are my people. The water reptiles destroyed our home, all because that Cascade wants his revenge. Revenge? What happened to him? A volcanic eruption, one that destroyed his home and changed everything he knew. And now he only knows destruction. I'm so sorry he attacked your people. But please, if you help my friend, I know somewhere safe for you all to hide. Hmm. 
So be it. Step aside. I did as he said, allowing him to approach Magmo. In a blast of mighty fire, the axolotl sealed his cracked shell, and Magmo became even stronger. Whoa. I, I feel like a brand new car. Let's go. Time we go to the next lava monument, the Lava Forge. On days 19 to 21, I followed Magmo as he led me to an ashen desert? Yep, it's not too far away. But I then saw a small group of water reptiles marching in a different direction. Where are they going? I have to find out. Bozo, stop! It's too dangerous. I followed behind the reptiles as they entered into a desolate landscape. What is this place? I then saw their main base. The place looked destroyed and it seemed like it was still in repair, but reptiles were working everywhere. They had anvils and other materials to reinforce their weapons. I went further in to investigate and came across a courtyard, one that was full of obsidian statues. My people and mom right next to her was an open spot. Is that supposed to be for me? Keep at it, boys! I watched as Cascade was up above the others. Our progress on the water volcano is coming along! And once it is finished, its eruption will be the biggest this world has ever known! All of those wretched lava creatures will be disposed of! Wait, did he say a water volcano? Now, take these disgusting statues and get them out of my sight. Then find that lava worm. Everything in me wanted to run in and fight, but then Magma moved in front of me. Bozo, no, we need to go. You're not strong enough. I know, Magmo, you're right. Let's go. On days 22 to 26, the two of us finally made it to the Ashen Desert. Whoa! Out in the distance was a tall plateau that held the Lava Forge, but it was completely turned off. As we made it to the entrance, I noticed that it was dark inside. Uh, hello? Suddenly, a hidden figure attacked me from the side. Ah! There, standing over me, was the Forge Master. You have no place here. He began to attack ruthlessly with his saw blade hand. Hey, knock it off. I began to fight back and launched my fire burst attack, causing the dark interior of the forge to light up. Oh, you're not a water reptile. I'm sorry. We are here because we want to reignite this place. Yeah, good luck with that. He started to walk off deeper inside. Hey, where are you going? I followed him until we made it inside of an engine room, which was completely shut down. Around the entire area were five empty fuel cells. My heat sources and lava creepers all got scared away when those water lizards showed up. They all ran off to who knows where, causing this forge to shut off. So, if we find them, we can reignite the forge. Can you show me which way they ran? On days 27 to 29, I left Magma with the Forge Master as I began to search around the Ashen Desert. How hard can finding five lava creepers be? Aha! Uh -huh. There! Who are you? Someone that's gonna get you back home. I continued to search, finding the second one hiding in a cluster of rocks, the third chasing a fox, and the fourth one hiding inside of a cave. Now, just to find the last one. Whoa! What was that? I ran over and followed the screams until I reached an oasis. But in the water was a massive water elemental. Hold on! I ran in and attacked the elemental. Take that! Gah! Cascade has been looking for you. Come here! We began to fight and his attacks hurt me a lot. Ah! I hate water! <laughs> You are weak! No, I'm not! I blasted the elemental with all of my lava power I could muster, causing him to evaporate and shrink down in size? What the heck? 
sorry. With one final hit, he was down for good. Yes. You saved me. Thank you. Of course. Now, let's get you guys back home. On days 30 to 32, I went back to the lava forge with all of the creepers behind me. Hey, forge master. Oh, you found them. Come on, get back in here. All of the lava creepers jumped into their tubes and almost instantly, the forge filled with light. Sweet. Yes, the forge is now fully operational again. Because of this, I felt the monument of the forge start to empower me. I grew in size, gained five more hearts, and now I could rain down a beam of lava on my enemies. Awesome. Wow, Fozo, you look great. Thanks. We should head back to our base and check on the others. On days 33 to 35, we made it safely back to home and noticed that the axolotls also made it there. Thank you for letting us stay here. Of course. Let's get you all settled in. I had gathered enough materials from my adventure to build up the axolotls, their very own lava swamp. And done. Why, I love it. From there, I went to the lava warrior. And as I approached, the lava orb shot out inside of him. And it seemed to empower him even more. Yes. It looks like we only need to recover two more monuments. Hey, back off. Was that baby beard? What's going on? I ran out of the base above ground and watched as multiple of the water reptiles were escorting him through the forest. Get your slimy hands off of me. Oh no, I have to help him. On days 36 to 39, I tried to follow behind the water reptiles as fast as I could until I reached a clearing showing their base. Everything looked even more fortified and repaired. Oh no, I can't just run in there. I need to stay hidden. I slowly snuck my way through and around the base, avoiding every reptilian soldier. Finally, I made it inside one of the structures. And that's when I saw Baby Beard trapped in a cage. I know you are working with him. So where is that wretched worm? I will tell you nothing. Cascade struck out at Baby Beard through the cage. No, I can't let him take anyone else from me. Hey, Cascade. You. Yeah, it's me. Now back away from my friend. <laughs> I'm glad that we finally get to meet. Oh, so. You're horrible. Taking innocent lives? My family? And for what? Power? Power? You think this is about power? You know nothing. On days 40 to 44, Cascade and I began to fight as he would attack me in a rage. Ah! I would fight back with all of my strength, but his water attacks made me weaker and weaker. I said, stay back. I am my new lava strike, knocking him away. If it weren't for you, ignorant lava kind, my family would still be here. What are you talking about? I once lived in peace with my family, my kids, my love. But because of creatures like you, an erupting volcano destroyed my homeland, making it the wasteland you see today. Waves of magma and fire burned it all to the ground and my family with it. Cascade, uh, I I'm sorry, but- Silence! All of you lava kind shall feel the same pain that I felt! He charged in to attack me again. Wait! But suddenly, a portal opened up right underneath me and sucked me in. And shortly, Captain Baby Beard followed. On days 45 to 47, the pirate and I fell through a strange portal and landed in an even stranger area. Ah, where are we? You are exactly where you need to be. I turned around and coming out of the shadows was a female devil. Uh, who are you? Calm down, Fozo. I simply brought you here because I need your help. 
All right, help with what? She brought us out of this strange cave and to an overlook where I saw a pool of lava surrounded by five otherworldly pillars. I am from the underworld and you are going to help me get back by igniting all of those pillars. The underworld? How did you end up here then? That is none of your business. <sighs> the portal simply needs one that yields the magic of lava. So, can you get started? And why would I help you? Because one of the lava monuments that you seek reside in my realm, the Magma Chalice. The Magma Chalice? All right, lady. Fine. I fired my lava at one of the pillars, causing it to ignite. I slithered down and repeated on each and every one of the pillars until finally all of them were lit up with fire. This caused the entire cavern to shake violently. Uh, did I do something wrong? But then the lava pool in the center transformed into a deep passageway that led straight underground. Okay, kind of scary. On days 48 to 52, the devil lady and I jumped down into the hole, falling all the way down into the underworld. As I looked at my new surroundings, everything was horrifying and felt like a nightmare. But I then looked up at a hill and noticed a cute little goat. Aw, at least not everything here is bad. Look at you. Wait, don't. <laughs> you fool. In a fiery explosion, the goat turned into a full-fledged demon. Ah, what the heck? No living visitors are allowed in the underworld. And you, you know you don't belong here. The demon started to attack. He would use fiery blasts and his large deadly scythe to his advantage. I tried my best to fight back, but because he was in his own terrain, he was much stronger. Ah, knock it off. Then the devil woman started to attack with me. She struck back at him with close range attacks and would even throw out spinning blades too. Whoa, she was awesome. Now let's finish this together. In a coordinated strike, the woman and I took the goat demon down. Curses, I won't forget this. Thank goodness he's dealt with. All right, Fozo, a deal's a deal. I'll lead you to where the magma chalice is being held. On days 53 to 56, the devil lady led me towards a castle that was in the distance. So, uh, it's in here? Yup. Have fun. Wait, where are you going? <sighs> Gee, thanks. I entered the main castle doors, not seeing a soul in sight until finally ahead of me, I found the large magma chalice. That's it. But why is it full of dog food? <laughs> Who goes there? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't mean you any harm. A living visitor? Leave my little home. This castle is little to you? Whatever. Look, I I'm sorry, but I won't leave until I ignite that chalice. <laughs> well, I'm not giving it to you. It's my new dog bowl. I lost my other one. To be honest, I really miss it. Wait, if I can find it, do you think I can have that chalice then? On days 57 to 59, Cerberus and I made a deal, making me venture across the underworld. I used my lava slither ability to help me journey across the large pools of soul lava. Now, where would I be if I were a dog bull? Just then, I heard a noise coming from the other side of the lava lake. Is that... Music? What the? As I made it over the lake, I saw a large group of shrub creatures dancing around in an underworld beach. Raised up in the center of it all was Cerberus's bowl. But why is it filled with boiling water? Whoa, whoa, hold up. I don't remember you being invited to the party. Explain yourself. It's okay. I'm just here for that bowl. Oh, you mean our hot tub? 
shrub. No way, pal. It's ours. More of the dancing shrubs started to circle around me aggressively. They looked like they wanted to fight. Okay, everyone, just calm down. There has to be a way I can get that bowl from you all peacefully. Hmm. Okay, maybe one thing. Follow me. On day 60 to 63, I followed the shrub to a strange boiling hot lake. So, this used to be our huge hot tub. But then, that grumpy old mushroom over there started to get all cranky. If you can go talk that bummer down, then the bowl is all yours. Got it. I walked over to the mushroom grove and looked for whoever this shrub could have been talking about. And that's when I found a mushroom with legs? Uh, hello? Grr! The creature then instantly started to attack. Whoa! He chased me around the grove, shaking off poisonous spores every chance that he could. Hey, just knock it off! Never! I will not let these bratty shrubs destroy my lake! I started to fight back with my lava abilities, but I could see that they hurt him a lot. Wait, why would the shrubs do that? Yeah, dude, we don't want to destroy anything. We just want to swim and party! The mushrooms seem to calm down and come to his senses. Oh, well, in that case, I could use a little company once in a while. Awesome! Come on, everybody! Let's dance! More and more of the shrubs came back around the boiling water and continued to all dance. Problem solved. Now, to grab the bull and get back to Cerberus. On day 64 to 68, I grabbed Cerberus's bull from the beach and returned to his castle to trade with him. Here you go, bud. Huh? Yes, 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 yes! Cerberus is so excited about his bull that he jumped for joy, shaking the ground with each pounce. He would even launch otherworldly attacks in his excitement. Okay, all right, boy, calm down! <sighs> Uh, Retro, sorry, I just really missed it. Please, do with the magma chalice whatever you wish. I went up and cleared the dog food out of the chalice so that I could blast it with my lava. This caused it to ignite and lighten up the room. Yes, I felt the underworld monument start to empower me. I gained five more hearts as I grew in size and gained the ability to attack with lava inferno chalice. Awesome! On day 69 to 73, I exited from the underworld entrance to find that Magmo was there waiting for me. What's going on? Uh, something happened while you were away. We gotta go, now. Huh? Where are we going? We went as fast as we could until I saw it. The water volcano. It was massive, and its power was causing the whole world to shake. Keep fueling it! Fueling it? I decided to take a closer look with Magmo. So we snuck into the surrounding base. As we got near the top of the volcano, we saw that the reptiles were dumping my people inside of the core. No! I rushed in fast to defend them, using my new Inferno Chain's ability to take out the reptiles. But then coming around the corner was a much stronger looking elite. Ah, the boss will be very happy with your capture. Lava worm! Not if I have anything to say about it! Magmo and I began to attack as the elite would try to push through our flames and get in close. And as he did, would swing at the magma snail. Watch out, Magmo! Magmo then launched a powerful earthquake attack to hurt the elite badly. I then followed with my inferno chains for one final hit. Woohoo! We did it! After his defeat, the elite dropped a fire feather? I picked it up and then looked towards my mother's statue. Thank goodness you're okay, mom. Now, time to bring you all home. On day 74 to 77, I returned to my base with everyone. I went quickly to work, building up an area for my people's statues. Hopefully soon, I can free all of you guys. I also added more defenses and measures to fight against the water reptiles. That'll make sure no 
one could come in here and take you all away from me again. I promise, Mom. I will see you again. After that, I went to where the Lava Warrior was in my base, and another core absorbed into him. It looks like he's almost fully ready. Cascade and his men won't stand a chance. Suddenly, I felt my body begin to burn. Ah, what is that? I quickly dropped the burning feather I got from before, but as it hit the ground, it transformed into a small phoenix? Ah, boy, am I glad not to be stuck with those reptiles anymore. Oh no, did they capture you? Yeah, can you believe that? I'm just a messenger here, and actually, I was looking for you. Me? For what? I come with a message from my lord, the Lava Phoenix. He has much to discuss with you about the last remaining lava monument. On day 78 to 80, I went with the little phoenix as he led me to a lush mountain. And on the cliffs high above was some sort of giant cage. We continued until reaching the interior of the golden structure. Well, good luck. In a small burst of flame, he turned back into the burning feather. Great. Then the air started to heat up as I heard a loud, intimidating caw. Flying into the structure were the massive wings of the Lava Phoenix. So, the last lava worm. Welcome to the final lava monument, the Pyro Pillars. Around the area were three tall pillars coated in smoldering ash. To awaken this monument again, the pillars must be reborn like a phoenix from the ashes. Sounds easy enough. But I am still not convinced of your worth. You are just a worm, after all. Well, someone's got to stop these reptiles, and it's going to be me. Very well. Time to prove it. Begin! On days 81 to 85, I began to move around the room, dodging attacks from the Phoenix. He's not holding back at all. He would attack with everything he had, but I dodged and used the lava ability to ignite the first pillar. Yes, he continued to fly and attack as I was trying to get past him. Uh, yeah! My attack flew out and struck them, causing the second second pillar to also ignite. Just one to go. Surprising, coming from a worm, huh? <laughs> the phoenix flew straight towards me in a rage. He struck me with a very powerful attack that I was knocked down to only a few hearts. Ah! Now, when you are at your end, can you still prove your worthiness? I have to. For my family. For everyone. I sent out blasts of lava. More powerful than I ever had before. This caused the phoenix to dodge out of my way. And for my attack to hit the pillar dead on. Because of this, the monument changed. I felt myself empowered by the pyro pillars. Gaining 10 more hearts. And now I could call down a large explosive meteor attack. Yes, I did it. That you did, worm. So go and revive the lava warrior to stop Cascade. On days 86 to 90, I was making my way back to my base when suddenly the world began to shake. I watched as in the distance, Cascade's water volcano had been completed and it started to unleash a massive torrent of water into the sky. Finally, the entire world will know my pain. It began to rain heavily as the river and sea began to overflow and valleys everywhere started to flood. No, no, no. I need to get back to my base now. On days 91 to 94, I rushed back to base. Magmo, mom! But as I arrived into the burrow, I noticed all of the lava worm statues had come back to life. Fozo! Mother! You did it, my boy. You ignited all of our monuments. 
And because of you, you freed your people. I'm so happy you're both okay. There's just one more thing to do before we all take on Cascade. I walked over to the Lava Warrior and allowed it to absorb the final core. Our base began to quake as the Guardian was now fully awakened. Ah, the Lava Warrior. Yes, it's me. I've revived you so that you can help us stop Cascade and the water reptiles. Me? I was never meant to be the one to stop them, my dear boy. What do you mean? Can't you see? All of this was to prove your worth. This is your fight, your journey, Pozo. And you are to be the Lava Warrior. With those final words, the Lava Warrior passed on all of the Lava Core's essence to me. I felt the lava element within me surge with power like I had never felt before, causing me to grow much stronger. It's up to me. Then it's time to take down Cascade. On days 95 to 99, I marched towards the water volcano with the power of the Lava Warrior. There, watching over me from atop the mountain was none other than Cascade. Look who finally decided to show up. I thought you had run away after taking back your people. You're wrong, Cascade. I saved them with the power of the lava monuments. And now I'm going to stop you. Is that so? Ha! Men, drown him! An army of water reptiles poured out of the kingdom and overran me. I did everything I could to clear out the army of them as I launched down lava meteors and infernal chains. But more and more of them just kept on coming. I continued to push my way further into the kingdom, but knew that I didn't have time for this. Suddenly, I heard a familiar voice call out into the air. Crashing in the center of Cascade's base was Captain Babybeard's entire pirate ship. I've been waiting to do this for a long time, you overgrown lizards! Fire! His ship's cannons obliterated all of the reptiles in sight, leaving an opening. Sorry I'm late, Lava Warrior. Go on ahead! Thanks, Captain! Here I come, Cascade. On day 100, I made it to the top of the water volcano to finally face Cascade. I thought maybe you'd understand how I felt after what I almost did to your people. You can't just hurt people. No one meant to destroy your home. Enough! We started to battle my empowered lava against this powerful water. Obsidian and small boulders would form as we would clash. I could tell that Cascade wasn't holding anything back as he would shoot out loads of water waves towards me. He then decided to come in close as we just kept trading our elemental hits. <laughs> In a flurry of hits, Cascade overpowered me, sending me backwards. Yeah, he's still so powerful. With the power of this geyser, I will show you all. Not if I have anything to say about it. I use my lava abilities, focusing all of my energy on taking him down. Ah! With my final attack, I summoned down a massive magma meteor shower. It crashed down onto the volcano and even landed straight onto Cascade, defeating him for good. Yes, I did it. And with that, the world could now live in peace.